I'm going to tell my story again. <laughs> it's snowing here in Utah today. And normally that would not be dramatic. However, this is the first time we've gone through winter with a pool. So in the middle of the night, the pool sensed that the temperatures were dropping because it's so smart. And the waterfall has a freeze warning on it. So the waterfall turned on as freeze protection and the pool cover was on obviously because it was the middle of the night. <clears throat> the temperatures dropped so quickly overnight that we have a foot of water on the pool cover this morning. <laughs> and because the pool is so large, we only had the pump. We're supposed to have two pumps on the pool. And we only had the pump because it's so big. We only had a pump on the west side of the pool, not the east side. And the east side is where the waterfall is. <laughs> and it's also sort of dark in the mornings now, you know, because the season is changing. The sun is in a different place. So when Sean got up to leave with the kids for school, he didn't see that the pool was flooding itself with the waterfall that had turned on as a freeze protect. <laughs> so then when I came out of bed at like 745, I'm looking at the pool and I'm thinking, did it rain that much last night? That's a lot of water on the pool. And I can't really see because I haven't got my bearings yet, you know? And I'm looking and I'm looking and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm starting my morning and I'm feeding the dog and I'm doing things and the, and the sun just slowly keeps coming up and up. And all of a sudden I'm like, the waterfall is on. Did Sean turn the waterfall on? And so I text him, did you turn the waterfall on with the pool cover closed? And he says, what is it on? And at this point I'm like, mayday, mayday, mayday. This has not been done on purpose because in my mind, like the pool people were going to come today to freeze, like to winterize just the waterfall. We're going to, we're going to heat the pool all winter long because our kids love it so much. And then it like preserves the pipes because they don't ever get cold. They're always just, you know, pumping 90 degree water in the pool. And so I thought, Maybe the pool guy told him to turn the waterfall on until he could make it today because it's almost 32 degrees outside. Anyway, it was instant morning drama. And we ended up, we ended up both in our, I mean, I was like down there in my robe trying to get the pump on. Sean and I are arguing. We're like, you know, questioning if we should be married. Not really, but like, you know, I mean, we've been married for almost 20 years. You know what I'm talking about? Where you're just like, you just are irritated with each other because you're trying to solve a problem, right? And so um, anyway, we now have the water with two pumps going, pumping off the, the cover back into the pool. And we had to like, I don't even know how we got the waterfall off because it wouldn't let us turn it off on the phone. It just wouldn't because it was a freeze protect. So it was like, no, no, we can't turn it off or the pipes will freeze. So anyway, we've been on the phone to pool people. They're coming out later today and they were supposed to come out anyway. It's just a day too late. So it's fine. looks like it's, um, yeah, Brianna says it's 35 degrees today in Idaho. The snow resorts are so happy. They're all doing their snow dance. First big snow of the season. And up north, like northern Utah, they got so much snow today. They had to like close classes on one of the universities for the morning classes because there's so much snow and so many trees. Because when we get lots of snow this time of year, the trees still have leaves on them. So it's too heavy. And then the branches break. It's so sad. So anyway, yeah. And Kathy says she has rain in rain SoCal, SoCal yesterday. So you sent it here because we always get California's rain systems. So anyway, so excited to be here with you today and really looking forward to coaching as usual. I just 
Uh, again, want to remind you, you're going to hear it like a broken record every day. Wednesday, October 20th, 10 a.m. You are not going to want to miss the webinar. I'm going to give you a code that you are going to want and you can only get it by being on the webinar. You can watch it on replay, but you're going to be at a disadvantage because there's going to be things that you're going to want to access and it's first come first serve. So I cannot stress enough that if it like at all possible, be on the call live to get that code to access some limited things that I've never offered before, okay? So there's a little bit of urgency there and I'm so excited about it. It's gonna be amazing. Teresa is bragging about 63 degrees in Oklahoma. We're all very jealous. <laughs> I'd be I'd be bragging too. It's so amazing. Uh, that is Wednesday, October 20th, one week from tomorrow. If I don't have your email address yet, emilygibsoncoaching.com. If you're not getting emails from me, email me. Hello at emilygibsoncoaching.com is my email address. Hello at emilygibsoncoaching.com. All right, we're going to get started. My book traveled out into the great abyss and my pen, which means I'm going to be using Chase's uh, pencil. What is this called when they're not real pencils? Why can't I remember it? Um, what are these called, you guys? I was a school teacher. <laughs> Mechanical pencil. Thank you. I'm going to be using Chase's mechanical pencil and my name book. This is my name book where I write down all my, you know, my lists of all the lucky people that I will one day sign up, right? I have so many of these books from the years. I always do a paper list. I like it better. All right. Raise your hand if you are getting coached today. I'm going to pull up my schedule here. But if you know you're going to be coached today, Kathy, you know you're getting coached today. Okay, Kathy, go ahead and unmute yourself. And the other person getting coached today is Sarah. So Sarah, you will be second. Okay, Kathy, what can I help you with today? Well, I sent when I signed up, I said I, um, I thought maybe we should follow up on my letter that I wrote myself. Yes, tell I us didn't. about it. Well... Um, I was rereading it today and I'm like, oh, I haven't done that. I haven't done that either, <laughs> but I'm working on it. Perfect. So do you want me to read it? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I'm a little embarrassed, but um, this is post dated April 2nd of 2022. Okay. I hope I can get through this. <laughs> and explain to people why you wrote it. Just if they've never heard a call before. Um, okay, so Emily wanted me to write a letter to myself post dated six months out. Um, because I tend to view myself as a poor leader and I don't implement things right away. And so, um, which is just your story and yeah. belief and your thought that you have about yourself. It's actually yeah. not true. It's just what you believe. No, right. It, right. Yeah. Yes. I, I do realize. That. Yes. No, no, no. I'm just saying like for yeah. the people that are new and may not be like, what's happening? What right. is this thing? <laughs> All right. So this is my letter. I hope I can get through it. <laughs> um, dear Kathy, I'm writing this letter to you. as an Emerald ambassador. Girl, you really showed up for yourself beginning in October of 2021. These are the ways you showed up for yourself and for your team. Number one, you set work hours and stuck to them no matter what. You held events for yourself and for your team every single week. If no one showed up, you did them anyway. You made yourself accountable to your closest, I can't read because of my tears, <laughs> your closest Jules and a couple of outside team sisters. There was strength in numbers. 
You loved your team bigly, cheered for them, everything that they did, messaged them encouragement and caring, sent little gifts and notes when possible. You did more lives on your social media, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, sharing your story, interviewing others, making things happen for you. When issues came upon, oh, when issues came up or times got hot, tough, you kept your eyes on the prize, which in my case is to be an emerald Um, Number six, you sought out coaching, thought coaching and business coaching from those who have accomplished what you set out to do. You gave yourself grace when needed, but kept going. Kathy, I'm so proud of you. And the woman you have grown to be, you are an example of grit, grace, boldness and clarity, kindness and caring. I can't wait to see what you become next. Love you, Kathy. Kathy, how does it make you feel to read that wisdom from your future self? Well, I have to do it, <laughs> but um, part of me is having a bit of a time believing it. There's some resistance there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How how come? Because I have to level up, and I don't trust myself to do that. Mm -hmm. Why not? Because I've not done it yet. And when we do that, it's because we're living in the past, right? We're, we're past thinking. We're past focused. When we look and say, well, I've never done it before. So what makes me think that I can do it now, right? That's very past focused thinking. And it's what so many of us do. I still do it, right? It's just because you have a human brain and it's trying to prevent you from using unnecessary energy. It's trying to conserve energy, seek pleasure and avoid discomfort, right? right? So your brain's like, oh, that's, I mean, that sounds like a lot of work. I just, I think we should just, you know, not do that. We're for sure going to experience negative emotion and that's bad. We could die. That's what your lower brain tells you because it's not evolved yet to understand that we don't experience the same struggles that we did hundreds of thousands of years ago when we were cavemen and that lower brain was there to keep us alive. And so now our lower brain basically just keeps us from emotional pain most of the time. I'm not saying all of the time. Of course, there are times where we come into danger and our lower brain is really useful. Like don't cross that freeway. That's not smart. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Lower brain. So appreciate that. Your intuition is like, no, this is bad. <laughs> and it's right. Don't try to cross the freeway. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and so a lot of times it's, it's useful, but the majority of your day, it's just protecting you and preventing you from experiencing negative emotion. And it's like, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out of this. We don't like it. We don't like it. And so when you have, whenever you have something that you want to change, like you want to rank up and you tap into your future self and your wisdom that you already know what to do. You just wrote it all down. It was beautiful. You know, that's your own wisdom that you just tapped into from your future self telling you what you need to do right now to get to there. And the resistance comes when we are past focused because the exercise is future focused, right? You did a future focused exercise and now your brain's like, seems like that would be uncomfortable. Let's focus on the past again to keep us safe because we've never done it before. So like, what are we thinking that we could even do this. 
And that's where we need to clean up the drama, right? Am I the drama? <laughs> I'm gonna be the drama. Am I the villain? I don't think I'm the villain. <laughs> yes and yes, you are the drama. You are the villain of your own life. And it's not a bad thing. It's a human thing, right? Like a lot of times it's really natural for us to be like, oh, I shouldn't be this way. What's wrong with me? Why can't I just like not be drama? Why, why are my thoughts so awful? No, they're just human. They're just human thoughts, right? So what is, when you, when you think about that letter, and if you have something else that you want to be coached on, we can totally do that. But I'm really, um, I, I mean, we could go one of two ways here, right? Like we, we can get coached on whatever you plan to come on or the direction that I would, that I'm like leaning more toward. And we don't have to go this way, Kathy, but I would love to know, like, uh, if you would like coaching on your resistance to that future focused wisdom. Yes. Okay. So when you think about that letter you just wrote, you said you have resistance because I've never done it before, right? Never done what before? I've never worked hard enough to get to, to Emerald before. Okay. I'm, so, I'm a senior Ruby. What day did you write that letter? Uh, October 2nd. Okay. Wrote a letter to myself on October 2nd from myself on October 2022. April. Oh, April, April 2nd, 2022. Okay. April 2nd. 2022 and your thought about it is what what do you think about it tell us again uh well you know like i i'm i'm having a hard time believing it i don't believe i can do it um yeah And when you think, I don't believe I can do it, what do you feel? Disappointment. Um, when you feel disappointment, what do you do? Oh, I buffer. I mean. What does that look like for you? Buffering is when we um, do other things to avoid negative emotion, if you're not familiar with that term. So what does that look like for you, Kathy? What's your buffer of choice? <laughs> <laughs> well, probably doing all the little things around the house that I avoid doing. Like what? You know, um, we're in the middle of a, getting ready to start a remodel. Actually, we're remodeling our upstairs and I have a lot of stuff to, de to declutter and get rid of and, and go through. So I've been working on that. My other way that I buffer is that, um, I eat even still. What do you like to eat? It doesn't matter. What do you grab four first. <laughs> um, usually something sweet or something carb like cookie Chocolate covered pretzel. Oh yeah. Chocolate, like what is chocolate it? Chocolate covered pretzel. If they're in the house, those are actually my, my, um, and I haven't had these in a while is, um, my, my choice would be Tootsie Rolls, you know, the mini tootsie rolls. Tootsie rolls, but I haven't done those in a long time. Okay. So, so I we like Tootsie I Rolls. Have. We like chocolate covered pretzels, peanut butter cup. Do we like peanut butter cups? No, no. No, uh -huh. I'm not a big peanut butter fan. Okay, not a big peanut butter fan. So we're eating chocolate covered pretzels. We're eating Tootsie Rolls. We are decluttering for the remodel. When you're eating the sugary carb, you said carbs too. Like, are we talking potato chips? Or are we talking like bread? Hmm. Chips, probably. Like which kind? What do you like? 
Um, well, I just started eating the sweet potato chips from Aldi. Okay. Which are better for you because they're sweet potato chips, but they're still. <laughs> it's funny how our brain's like, yeah, it's soaked in canola oil and deep fried, but like it's sweet potato. So it's totally better for us. Right. <laughs> yeah, I did that too. Costco has this chip <laughs> in this black bag. And it's like taro root and parsnip and sweet potato. And I bought them and I was like, these are healthy chips, family, like eat up. And then I was reading the ingredients and it's like canola oil. I was like, oh, oh, perfect. Oh, perfect. So it's the same as eating like Lay's potato chips. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. So we eat sweet potato chips and in our mind, we're also justifying uh, that it's, that it's healthy. Right. Yep. Are we enjoying when we eat the chocolate covered pretzel and the Tootsie roll and the potato chips? I'll be honest with you. I don't think about it that way. So what happens in your head when you're eating that stuff? Um, when you're buffering, I just don't think about it. It's like, it's like a response. I've always, right. cause, cause when you're buffering, you're numbing out. Yeah. You're, you're trying to avoid feeling you're beyond feeling. Right. So, but there is something going on in your head when you're doing it. Well, of course, you know, it's, I should not be eating this. Okay. So we're beating ourselves up. Well, I, I mean, I know for me personally, that the internal yeast issue is fed by nothing but sugar. <laughs> so it's like, it's counterintuitive to what I want to do, you know, with my health. So, so, so I'm beating myself not, up about that. Mm -hmm. And we're also breaking. Yeah. We're like, uh, any, any, uh, self-loathing in that? Like, oh yeah. Eating it. Yeah. Super common to have that happen by the way. Um, and then, I mean, in your results, obviously, I don't trust myself. That one is the big one, you know, with the red shiny alarm going off. But I think some other results that we see are, I don't like myself. And we're not saying you don't like yourself in general. That's not, if you're new here, what what this is, is I don't like myself in this moment when I'm doing these actions from feeling disappointment when I think I don't believe I can do it. So it's like a split second, right? But how many times a day are you picking this thought? I don't believe I can do it. You know, many times a day, probably. For sure, when you think about your letter, that's what's coming up. So yeah. every time you think, every time you look at this letter, this letter that you wrote to yourself and you think you choose the thought, I don't believe I can do it. What do you make it mean when you think I don't believe I can do it? That's a good, I don't, I'm, that's a good question. Probably that I'm, um, I'm a failure and that, um, that I don't finish what I set out to do. What else is true about you? Can you show me examples of other places in your life where you are a finisher? Hmm. Well, I mean, obviously I've had four children, so I finished those. <laughs> I, I graduated all four of them from high school, homeschooled. Um, I don't know. And it's kind of interesting how your brain's like, yeah, we're not a finisher. And I'm a failure. 
Like that's where your head's going. But yet in other areas of your life, particularly raising your children and homeschooling them, you were able to achieve what others cannot. I mean, I'm like a trained certified school teacher and I know that I would not be a finisher of that. Like I've talked about this, how at the end of COVID last year, you know, I always said if I had to homeschool my own kids, they would be dead or illiterate. Yeah. And it, it's true. It was actually true. It was a true thought probably because I thought it right. They all lived, but they were near illiterate. Like the last day of school, my 13 year old had 15 missing assignments. And I, 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 I called this principal and I was like, Hey, listen, so we're done. Yeah. I did my best. And it's totally up to you. If you want to hold him back, like I get it. I have failed and I'm so sorry. And she was like, solidarity sister, let's just close out this year. <laughs> right. And like, I totally felt like I was a failure, but I was like, you know what? Like nobody's dead. Everyone's alive. Go me. Right. And so it's kind of interesting how, you know, in your mind, you're describing yourself as a successful mother, a successful homeschooling mom. You have this great achievement in your life. And why, why does that not apply to your plexus business? I'm curious because the two are not matching up for me. I, I don't know. Can you explain it to me? No. Let's try. What's your brain telling you the difference is? Well, the word that just came to my brain is that we sacrificed for me to stay home and to, for me, when we decided to homeschool, that was also a sacrifice in many ways. And, um, and for me right now to set my sights on my, my goal is pretty sacrificial with my time um, because of all the other things we have going on. How so? Um, well, you know, when you're, when you're working on a goal and you're working really hard, other things uh, get set aside. Like explain that to me, like the meals don't get done the way that, that you're used to having them done or, it looks a little different like this morning, my granddaughter's in the living room watching TV and doing her own little thing. And I have no idea what she's doing because I can't quite see her. I keep looking for her, but <laughs> she's not making any bad noise or anything. So I guess she's alive. <laughs> you should know, you should know what she's doing all the time. Well, I keep an eye on her. I mean, I babysit her. But so. you should know what she's doing all the time. Well, I can't know it all the time. But your brain's telling you that you should. Isn't yes. that interesting? Yes. <laughs> and um, you should, you said something about the meals. The meals aren't right. Well, it's, it's not just the meals. It's the housekeeping. It's, it's you know, the, all the things that either sacrifice an hour that I could be spending doing the housework to sit down and do my business. And the housework should be done. Yes. Why? Because we're living in chaos right now. <laughs> you shouldn't be. I don't think we should. Why not? Because my husband deserves better. Why? Because he's, he's always worked really hard for us. And so you keeping the house not in chaos is going to help him feel better. Well, yeah. Who likes to come home from work to, to a mess? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> who, uh, who makes your husband feel good or bad? He does. 
but you just said that if you keep the house clean, then he will feel better. So explain that to me because it's not lining up. Well, he, if you, I know, I know where you're going. <laughs> just showing you what your brain's doing and, it, and we all I, do it. I know. Right. Our brain's but, like, yeah, the house is in chaos and that's my husband deserves better than that. And so I need to have a clean house because he deserves that. And I have the power to make him feel good. But is that true? No. Why not? Because only he can make himself feel that way. With what? With his thoughts. You're 100% responsible for your happiness and he's 100% responsible for his happiness. And then there's this element in our relationships because we're human where we also like to please the people in our lives, right? And there's, there are, I'm not saying like, this is black and white. So nobody has to email me about this. It's fine, right? Sometimes people will say, I disagree with what you said. I'm like, I know, it's okay. It's fine. You're probably right. I'm probably wrong, right? We all get to decide for ourselves. Is that your granddaughter? Yes, she just blew me a kiss. Oh, precious. (laughs) See, she's doing fine, right? She's conniving right now. (laughs) You're going to get stuck. (laughs) Get out of there. Sorry. Where I'm going with this is that when we tell a story about how working our business is sacrificial, it's a dangerous thought because it doesn't serve. And it's just a story that you're telling about your business, that it's sacrificial because the meals aren't done the right way. What's the right way? Who decides what the right way is? And your brain's like, no, there's a way that's not chaotic and I know it. And I'm going to do the perfect meal planning and the perfect you know, watching of my granddaughter because that's what a good grandma does. And I'm not saying that you should or shouldn't do it any other way. I'm not saying put your kids at risk or your grandkids at risk, but just hang on, hold, hold on for just a minute with me here, guys, because one of the things, so Brooke Castillo is who I'm trained through the life coach school, right? And I use the model that is owned by the life coach school, CTFAR. You are only allowed to use that model if you are trained and certified in it. Okay. So Brooke Castillo tells this story about how she was sitting at the park one day with her kids and watching them play. And her thought was, I could just leave right now. I could just like get up and leave them here. And the moms are like, oh, that would put them in danger. Yeah, it would, but you could totally just get up and leave. And a lot of times when we let our brain see what options really exist, it gives us space to choose. No, I want to make dinner a certain way. I want to watch my granddaughter in a certain way. Not I have to, but I want to. And there's a big difference that I hope you can see that I'm teaching here is yes, like, We want to watch our children. We want to watch our grandchildren. We want to keep them safe. But when our brain starts telling us that there's a certain way to do it and we have to do it and we are, and we have to sacrifice other things to do it, there's a thought error there. And it keeps us from success and achieving the things that we want to do. What are you thinking about as I'm explaining this to you? What's coming up? That makes sense. Why? How so? I don't know how to explain it. Yes. (laughs) I don't know how to explain it. (laughs) 
see, I never say I don't know because that's not it's an okay. answer. You can also say, you can say, I don't know. <laughs> Even though I say you can't, you can. You just open your mouth and you say, I don't know, right? I don't know. I don't know what's, yeah. I don't, I, I'm processing still. Yes. And it's like, when we like right now in your mind, you're like, I don't believe I can do it because I'd have to sacrifice too much to do it. But what if you didn't have to sacrifice too much to do it? That could go two ways. Tell me. The sacrifice is usually worth what the goal is when you hit the goal. Usually, not right. always, but How? usually. How is it? Um, because of the, the, um, the pride for one and the financial gain for two. Um, the trust you build with yourself. The, the trust I build with myself. Mm-hmm. Um, the accomplishment. I mean, that alone is a huge accomplishment. Of course, I'm not saying that any rank is not a huge accomplishment because it sure. is. Sure. Uh, the relief that comes with achievement is yes. euphoric. Yes. I mean, when I started out, I never thought I would be a senior Ruby. Right. <laughs> never. Look at I mean, you. This so far. Away. I mean, when you look at it, it, it looks so far away because you're like, yes, I never I thought I would get, really? I never thought I'd go past Ruby ever. Yeah. And that's a hundred orders. If you're not familiar. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's, it's a huge deal to have, because everything has to fall into place for that to happen. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I, I'm aware of that. I mean, I've been watching and, and doing this for almost seven years now. Um, and so it will be a huge relief. The, uh, you know, the other way it could go is that it's too great of a sacrifice. How do we know if it's too great of a sacrifice? I don't know. Um, because I, I guess maybe because I'm, a, I'm, I struggle with this, you know, it's a little bit of a, um, I'm a little torn. And, you know, if I was talking to one of my own people, I would be telling them, you can do this, you know, all the, all the things I could tell them all the things, but I don't understand why I can't make those things click for me. Mm-hmm. It's because of your thoughts. So I, that's all it's just your thoughts and the thoughts that we have to have to be Emerald and hit that next rank are different than the thoughts you have right now that are keeping you at senior Ruby. And so where, where the work to be done around this is, is for you to really clean up your thoughts around the sacrifice might be too great. Okay. And defining out what would I, what do I think I have to sacrifice? And what if I'm wrong? Because what, what I've learned over the last six years is that I put myself through a lot of unnecessary pain and suffering that I'm not going through building my second position because I don't look at it as, oh, I'm sacrificing these things. I'm like, I don't even want to clean my house. That's why I have a housekeeper. It's on the list. (laughs) <laughs> but it's like, you could totally hire a housekeeper if you wanted to. You could make your granddaughter clean your house every time she comes over. Even though she's little. She lives here. <laughs> oh, well, you can make her clean. You could have your husband clean, right? But we have this victimization going on in your actions where you're like, yeah, I would have to make this sacrifice and it's too great of a sacrifice. And it's like this really heavy, like heavy, heavy load that you're carrying around in this backpack. You're like, oh, 
poor me. I just, if I make, if I, if I choose to do this, it's going to just, it's like you're catastrophizing everything, right? You're like, oh, if I make this sacrifice, I'm going to give up something really amazing in my life. And it's, I'm going to have regret about it later. I might. So we better not even try. Yeah, I could see that. And then this feeling of disappointment is kind of fascinating to look at as well. Because what I'm wondering is, is let's just go with this sacrificial theory of yours, right? That getting to Emerald is going to be very sacrificial. And the reason why you believe that is because you've been told that by me and other leaders, you know, oh, we had to sacrifice so much. You just have to make sacrifices. What if we're all wrong? What if you don't have to make the sacrifices that we thought we had to make? What if you could do it in a way that you didn't have to make those sacrifices? I want you to think about that over the next couple of weeks. And then what I also want to point out here, this feeling of disappointment, let's say that let's say that I'm right and, and that all these other leaders are right and you have to sacrifice your relationships and you have to sacrifice all these things. What is that going to feel like when you sacrifice all that and you get to your goal, you're going to look back and possibly feel disappointed? Yes. But you're already feeling disappointed right now. Right. So it's kind of interesting how your brain's like, don't do it because we might feel disappointed. So you're just feeling disappointed ahead of time. Interesting. And it feels safer because you're like, but at least I feel disappointed right now. And like dinner goes the way it should go. And watching my granddaughter goes the way it should go. So I feel disappointed, but like, at least I'm checking all these boxes of obligation. Because feeling disappointed without being able to check those boxes, I'd probably die. Is what your brain is telling you. Hmm. And, and just to have awareness that it's doing that because it's trying to avoid negative emotion. Okay. But can it? Can it avoid it? No. No. So we buffer. We're like, yep, chocolate covered pretzels, sweet potato chips, justify that it's healthy, beat myself up, self loathing. Let me find a Tootsie Roll and I'm not even going to enjoy the Tootsie Roll while I eat it. And our result is always, I don't trust myself or I don't like myself in that moment. And is that what you want? No. What do you want? What do I want? I want to be able to trust myself and I want to be able to hit my goal and maintain it and have all the things that I, you know, my family, uh, the extra perks that come along with the rank. What if we had this thought, I am a pioneer that can hit my goals and not sacrifice the most important things to do it. Like what if you're just the first person that shows everyone that you can get to Emerald without sacrifice, without a sacrificial experience. I'm That's willing another, to try. Another <laughs> thought, I can get 
to emerald without a sacrificial experience. And your brain's going to push back. It's going to be like, no, you can't. It's never been done before. Everyone says that you have to sacrifice. Everyone knows that you have to sacrifice. And you just push back on your brain and you go, what if they're wrong? What if there's another way? Because you see something amazing about humans is that We, let, we don't like to change our state of being, right? Like I'm sitting in my office and I'm like, Sean, can you go bring my water to me really fast? Or you're sitting on the couch and your granddaughter's in the same room as you. And you're like, what's your granddaughter's name? Nova. You're like, Nova, will you bring me my phone on the table? And it's like three feet away from you. <laughs> and it's not that you're lazy, it's that our brains don't like to change their state of being. It's why when we're sitting on the ground, it seems like a lot of work to get up and go to the bathroom. So when we're five, we like pee our pants on the playground because we're like, it seems like a lot of work to go inside and go pee really fast. Because we don't like to change our state of being. So right now your brain is like, let's just stay senior Ruby. That'd be easier. We'd have to sacrifice too much to get to the next place anyway. So, and then there's these like nice, they, they seem really nice. This, these thoughts that your brain is offering to you, like, well, you know, my husband deserves a cleaner house. My granddaughter deserves all my attention, right? Like they seem like really nice thoughts but they're thought errors. It doesn't mean you can't choose them. And it doesn't mean that you can't have dinner the way you want it and watch your granddaughter the way you want it, but because you're choosing to look at it as very black and white. Like I either sacrifice all of these things that are important to me or I rank up. And the choice is so heavy. It's no wonder you're not doing it. Right? Yeah. We got to get in the zone in the middle, which is what I'm going to teach you guys about on the webinar on the 20th at 10 a.m., which is why you can't miss it. Because I'm going to teach you how to get in the middle of all of that. But in the meantime, Kathy, what I want you to do is I want you to when you, when you write that, when you think this thought, I can get to Emerald without a sacrificial experience. And we know we don't believe that now, but we could say it's possible that I can get to Emerald without a sacrificial experience. Okay. And then ask yourself, how? What could I do? Hire a housekeeper. What else? Like your brain's going to tell you the answers and then you're, you're going to push back on it. You're going to be like, no, we can't do that because that means that we're like a bad wife. No, we can't afford that. We don't have the money yet. We're not Emerald yet. We can't pay for that yet. Sure you can. Like calling your brain out on its black and white thinking is where you take all your power back. Because right now you're giving all your power away to husband who deserves to have meals and a non-chaotic house. And granddaughter who, you know, is probably just watching TV, but in our minds, we're like, oh my gosh, she's running amok and probably playing with <laughs> knives. Right? I know, because I'm the same. 
I threw out a dressing and a salsa last night because I was convinced that the Uber driver had opened them and put poison in it. And we were going to be on the news tomorrow dead. And Sean was making fun of me because he was like, no, Mackenzie had a snack and opened them on Sunday. But I was like, so convinced that we were going to die from poisoning. Cause you know, that seems logical. <laughs> and we were like laughing at my brain last night. We're like, look what mom's brain did. And then we didn't have the good salsa and the good dressing for the tacos. And everyone's like, oh, mom. And I'm like, my anxiety keeps us safe. Shush. <laughs> and it's also kind of funny. And thank goodness my family thinks it's funny. You just didn't want to be a movie of the week, right? I didn't want to be on the news. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> they ate the salsa that, that was opened. And I like see the newscasters in my mind, like, you know, how when like tragedies happen, they're like, and you know, we just want to remind you, don't ever let your children out of your sight. This pain and suffering could have been avoided had you been a better parent. What if you're just human? And you yeah. can't control all things and you can't prevent all disasters. Wouldn't it be nice if we could avoid all pain and suffering and prevent accidents from happening? Yeah, please. If someone knows how to do that, like, let me know. Until then, I'm going to just continue to believe that life is 50-50. Hey, Kathy, lots to work on. Yeah. <laughs> Can't wait to coach you next time when you bring it back and tell me <coughs> what your brain is bringing up. Okay. And I want to know, you know, like the really juicy stuff too, where you're like, yeah, yeah. My husband, he thinks that he deserves a less chaotic house too. <laughs> like that stuff. I love it. Like let the brain run wild. It's so fun and interesting to look at it. <laughs> okay all right thanks we'll get some more thoughts and bring them back to coaching okay <laughs> okay perfect okay sarah you're up yeah hi sarah <laughs> hello how are you surviving oh perfect we what are can I finishing help you with today we are finishing up. I don't know. You're finishing up I'm what? Just a quarantine. My sick test positive for COVID. So we're. Who did? We, my six year old. Oh, yes. So fun times. Yes. My daughter, she said, she told us on Sunday night that for the last two weeks, everything has tasted and smelled like mayonnaise. Yeah, so I texted my pediatrician friend and I was like, so um, yeah, um, what's that? She's like, oh yeah, that's COVID. I'm like, oh, perfect, perfect. So um, that was two weeks ago. She's like, yeah, you've already, it's fine. <laughs> She's like, just carry on. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> nobody else nobody else has any other nobody has any <laughs> symptoms and we I'm like good job Kenzie good job <laughs> way to go next time let us know when everything tastes like mayonnaise on day three maybe don't wait till day 14 when it doesn't matter anymore <laughs> but, but yeah. yeah yeah kids the best okay so um do you want to be coached on your business or do you want to be coached on your personal life um, I guess business, but I don't really have a business. So I feel oh, like you're just oh, starting at the one. basics. That's good. I don't really have a business. <laughs> Explain that to me. Um, I mean, I am a like this ambassador, but, um, my husband's a youth pastor. And so we've been, we just moved to our new location and, um, I have an eight month old. And so I've just 
I, I have three boys. I have a six-year-old, a three-year-old, and now an eight-month-old. I did that to myself so, too, almost identical. Yep. Mine were seven, so five, just, three, and four months old when I started my business. So I feel you. <laughs> <laughs> not in a pandemic, so like I saw, though. <laughs> not in a pandemic, though. So you win. You still win. I don't know about that. <laughs> but um, so, and I like, I like the products and I take them as often as I can and as our budget allows um, because I do stay home. And so, um, and youth pastors don't make a whole lot of money. So, <laughs> um, but I'm just like, I'll, I post about it occasionally, you know, like I just tried the greens. And so I made a post that I, you know, I tried the greens, but that's pretty much it. Like I Have don't. Have you signed anybody up yet? Um. So, like, my mom is technically signed up under me. Um. What does that mean? Technically signed up under me. Like, I'm. Like, she uses the products too. So she is so signed up under she, you. Yeah. Okay. So your mom is signed up under you, and you get paid for her to order every month. Anyone yes. else? My mom was my, my first person too, by the way. I think my mother-in-law is under me. Like, I think she's an ambassador, but she doesn't. She doesn't order. She does. no, in-laws doesn't. In-laws are the really worst. In-laws are the worst, aren't they? <laughs> no, that's just a thought, right? <laughs> right. And I had one lady at our church my in-laws are amazing by the way i'm just playing with thoughts here you guys understand that right okay go ahead okay um i had one lady but she but my in-laws don't order either do you want me to keep interrupting you my (laughs) in-laws don't order either (laughs) okay carry on um but she doesn't she's not an ambassador anymore i don't know what happened there okay but so we have one with that but Okay. We have one person that orders. Yeah. Okay. And we make money from that every month. Um, no, because she doesn't order every month either. Your mom. Yeah. Okay. She, she just orders it when she can too. Um, okay. So, um, I'm going to really get nosy on some of this stuff really quickly here. Um, Okay. When Sorry, think, I'm a mess. Oh, no, no, no. We're all a mess. This is just human. Okay. Um, I don't really have a business. And you feel what when you think that? That it's not a priority. No, what's like the emotion? Oh. I don't really have a business. I don't like... I would say failure, but I know I'm really not a failure because I just am not trying. That's fine. Let's just like, um, when I think I don't really have a business, I feel blank. What emotion? I guess sad. Okay. And when you feel sad that you don't really have a business, what do you typically do? just like move on like don't think about it what does that look like like I can't kind of like I feel like when you talk to Kathy like a lot of that I kind of was thinking about it thinking about it and like oh well I can just this has to get done laundry needs to get done the baby's hungry the baby needs to nap the to-do list kind of thing do something that makes me succeed, like, or feel like I'm succeeding, I guess. That's called buffering. Right. Yeah. Because we're trying to get in, because when you accomplished is a positive emotion, sad is a negative emotion, right? Right. So we're like, oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's like start doing things that we know we can be successful at because then we won't feel sad anymore. Right. Yeah. Okay. So we do laundry when we're sad. We, you know, feed the baby when they're sad. We put the baby down for a nap when we're sad. 
Um, and what goes on in your head when all this is happening? Like, what do you like, if I was inside of your head, what would I hear you saying to yourself when you're sad doing all these things? Um, <laughs> you're doing a good job now. <laughs> like it's okay. You're doing a good job now. You weren't doing a good job before. No, because I'm not, I don't have a business. Um, so there's like some, uh, in your mind, you're like telling yourself, like beating yourself up because you're not doing a good job. Right. Okay. So beating self up because not doing good job. Anything else that you're avoiding doing when you're feeling sad? I don't tell anybody, you know, like I don't acknowledge it to anybody. What do you mean? Like I don't tell people, oh, I'm really sad right now okay, because I'm so, feeling at this. Uh, don't share feelings with others. Right. You go inward. Uh, it doesn't sound like you're messaging anyone to try your products when you're sad. Nope. Not, not posting when you're sad. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And your result is I don't move forward. Right. right. And we think it's because I don't really have a business, but our thoughts are what create our feelings and our feelings are what drive our actions and our actions are what produce our results. And there's not one thing in your action line that's going to make you money today. Right. Yeah. And our brain's like, yeah, it's because I don't really have a business. Hmm. Okay. Why do you choose to believe that you don't really have a business? Why do I believe that? Mm -hmm. Because it's true. <laughs> so I have this, um, I have this um, coaching business that is making zero dollars and it hasn't made any money in the last 90 days. Right. Is it a business? Yes. Why? Well, I guess if you're not making money, I don't know. I don't know. Do you see how it's not lining up? Because right. like I went to this mastermind over the weekend and they're like, tell me about your business. I'm like, I have the most incredible coaching business. I have thousands of clients that listen to my podcast every day and hundreds that watch the whole YouTube video every day, hundreds, like over 200 watch the replay on video. And then thousands listen to the episodes on the podcast every day. And I have all these clients that come to the live calls and then they email me and they comment on my Instagram. And like, it's the most amazing business. And they're like, what's your revenue? I'm like, zero dollars. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But in my mind, I'm like, it's a thriving business. What's the difference? Your mindset. My thoughts about my business. And because my thoughts are, I have this thriving business that I love. 
I feel excited. And guess what shows up in my action line? Daily calls, posting, making reels, reaching out to everyone I can think of. I'm like, you got to come to my webinar on next Wednesday. You're totally going to miss out if you're not on it. Like you've got to be there. It's going to be so good. I like wrote out my whole webinar again yesterday. I'm going to practice it today. I'm going to make tweaks. I'm like sending it to my assistant. I'm like, read it, criticize it. Tell me what needs to change. And the only difference now, if I was telling myself like, oh, you know, I don't really have a business, I wouldn't be excited. I'd feel like sad. And when I'm sad, I scroll social media and I typically talk to my husband, phone a friend, maybe I'll work on my other business that I can be really successful at really fast, right? I can just message someone to order my products, close them in three messages, sign them up. And my brain's like, yeah, you should totally just focus on your network marketing career. But I'm like, yeah, but I want to do both. There's like this calling inside of me, right? I want to do both. So <clears throat> with your result, I don't move forward. I don't like myself as a business owner because you are a business owner. You own a business. There's a whole ambassador agreement that you signed when you joined, you own a business. The IRS believes you own a business, but you're like, yeah, but I don't really have a business. So like you totally can't tax me on these things. And they're like, pony up the money. You're a business owner and we're sending you a 1099 form because you own a business and you have to pay taxes on that money. So if the IRS considers you to own a business, and you're like, no, I don't really have a business. I don't think I should pay taxes. How do you think that's going to go over? Not well. <laughs> you know, they just like take the money out of your account at some point, right? You guys in right. pursuit of happiness, right? Like they just like take it out of your account. They just like hack into your bank account. <laughs> <coughs> I mean, I don't know. I've always just paid my taxes. But when I watch that movie, I'm like, oh, that's what happens when you don't pay your taxes. Okay. Yeah, I don't want that to happen. <laughs> so what makes what like in your mind what defines having a business let's like list it out just like having like like being an upline like actually like not having people that take the products with me and like just do it. Okay. So your, your definition is having people under me is how, you know, you have a business. Right. Okay. And making money. Okay. Income. You feel like you still are married to this idea that you have to make money to have a business. Okay. Right. Okay. And that's not necessarily true. And you know, that's just a thought because you believe that I have right. a legitimate coaching business, but I make $0 right now. Right. Okay. So just a thought, but we're just putting out here what we believe right now. This is important. When you were pregnant with your babies, did you think you were a mom? Your first baby, you're pregnant. You're like eight weeks pregnant. Were you a mom then? Or when were you a mom? Feel like you weren't a mom till the, they were born because then it's like tangible but like but you had like a baby growing inside of you that you were growing and nurturing and feeding and like giving True. like you're creating a human that whole time it's so like what makes you a mom the baby i don't know <laughs> i mean what if like your business is just like pregnant right now
So you have to like nurture it and feed it and stuff, right? What would, you, what would that look like? What would that be like the messaging and all and like you and I feel me. like um how do you nurture a business if your business is pregnant what do we need to do for it to grow it because we know you don't really have a business right now and that's what you believe like we get that right? Right. So you're just pregnant with your business. So what do you need to do to grow the baby? Believe it. And like, so if you believe, myself. if you believe that you can, if you believe that you can grow the baby, it's just going to grow. It just takes belief. No. <laughs> When you're pregnant in real life, what do you have to do to grow the baby? Like, I know your body goes into autopilot and it like knows what to do, but like, what do you have to do with it every single day? Take care of it. Like, like what does that look and... like? Like for me, it was like Taco Bell and Dr. Pepper at 10 45 AM, or I would throw up. And it was like multivitamins. Right. I wouldn't say like drinking the water and like making healthier choices in my food. So I'm not like, like Dr. Pepper and Taco things. Bell, like Dr. Pepper and Taco right. Bell at 10 45. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was the only thing I could eat guys. I would throw it up. Okay. So like making healthier choices, drinking water, getting good sleep. Right. So you like, you actually had to take actions in order for your baby to grow the best that it could grow right so what actions do you need to take every oh and the baby just didn't like grow in one day no you like, didn't just have like a nine month baby bump. Like you're like, Oh, one day did it. Drink my water, ate healthy. Like how long right. did it take? Nine months, nine months. Some of you, you get to have babies earlier than that, but the rest of us, we go to 41 weeks and have nine pound babies <sighs> because we didn't have blood sugar balance back then. <coughs> Ha uh ha. -huh. <laughs> okay. So you have to like do it every day. And then like every month your baby grows a little bit bigger. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So what are those nourishing things that you think off the top of your head, just taking your best guess that you would have to do to grow your business baby over the next nine months? I feel like it definitely helps to take the products daily. Okay, take the products. What else? Are we going to tell anyone about it? Yes. What, how? So you probably like, either like text message, post on Facebook, that kind of thing. Are we going to call anyone Social on the media. phone? Sure. <laughs> I don't have to. I'm just wondering yeah. what it's going to look like to grow the baby. I was going to say, probably not on the phone because I can't usually make it with a phone call without a screaming baby or a okay. toddler. Okay, so we're just going to so text. <laughs> we're just going to text and then post on social media. Yeah? 
Yeah. Okay. Are we going to need to like have a monthly appointment with our OBGYN, AKA my amazing business coach, Emily Gibson? Probably. <laughs> I'm totally leading you there and teasing you. Uh, <laughs> some sort of like accountability. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Accountability check-in. To make sure the baby's growing okay. Right? Would you go nine months right. growing a baby without having a monthly doctor visit? No. Why not? Because that's not healthy. Interesting. <laughs> okay, so accountability check-in. Dr. Emily, just kidding, sort of. I really do think I could be of help to you, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then what else? Anything else we need to do to grow the baby every day? Drink the water. What's the water? Like, like, are we actually talking about drinking water or are we speaking in metaphor still? No, I'd probably drink like real water. That is my okay. goal every day. Okay, to drink, drink uh, real, real water. Right. Uh, Self-care time. Connection with family time. But these don't have to be like, you know, time blocked out all the time. You can, like yesterday we talked about time blocking and how to build in that connection with family time. But when you're a stay at home mom and your children are little, that's going to look a lot different than when you have school age children. Right? right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So in order to do all of these things, take the products daily, text, post on social, accountability check-in with someone to hold me accountable, drink real water, self-care, connection with family. How are we going to, what emotion are we going to have to feel that's going to motivate us to do that every single day? Because when we're pregnant, we're like, yeah, I want a healthy baby. So I'm motivated to do those things because I want a healthy baby. And it might be out of like scarcity or fear when we choose the thought, I want a healthy baby, then we're like afraid. And then we take all these actions because we're afraid of the consequences, right? But like in our, in our business here, what emotion do you think is going to be the one you're going to want to feel? And only, you know, the answer to this, by the way, I'm not like poking for anything in particular, but what emotion do you think you're going to feel to be able to take these actions? What emotion do I need to feel to take these out? What do you, yeah, what, what emotion do you think is going to like get you moving in those things? I would say probably happiness. Okay. So your feeling is happiness. And when you're happy, you can take the products daily. You can text, you can post on social, you can do accountability check-in, you can drink water, you can give self-care, you connect with family. And what are you going to have to believe about yourself to feel happy when you think about your business? What, what will I believe about myself? Yeah, what are you going to have to believe on the daily about your business to feel happy? That I can succeed. I or That it can happen. I, I can, can succeed. It. When you have, when you think that thought, I can succeed, what feeling comes up for you?
fun. Um, Any resistance to it? I mean, I'm sh yeah, there's some resistance, but. Like what? Just like doubt. So that's not our thought then. Right. Because we want happy in our feeling line, not doubt. Right. From doubt, our actions are going to be all messed up. Right? Right. I really like using the pencil a lot better than a pen, guys. I can like erase the thought when we change the thought. This is so handy. Why have I never used a pencil before? What are we going to have to believe about our business to feel happy? Um, I don't know. Um, Do you like helping people feel better? Yeah. How does it make you feel when you think I love helping people feel better? So an emotion, right? Mm -hmm. This makes me think I need to expand my emotions. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like, I need to like think outside of the box for emotions. I love helping people feel better. Makes me feel what? Um, satisfaction? Satisfaction? Like, yeah. Like happy or satisfaction? Right. I was going to say, I, well, that's what I was like. I feel like I would say happy, but then I feel like I'm just keep, like, that's my go-to, I guess. Listen, that <laughs> means that we found the thought. I love helping people feel better. Makes me feel happy. That's what we were trying to get. Was it not? Yeah. Okay, so the thought, I love helping people feel better makes me feel happy. From happy, I take my products every day. I text people. I post on social media. I do accountability check-ins. I drink my water. I do self-care. I connect with family. And my result is I move forward. I trust me. I believe in me. I... Yeah, I like those. What do you think? Do you see that? Right. So your unintentional model is what your lower brain is running all the time right now. And it's saying, I don't really have a business. And that makes you feel sad. And then you're doing laundry and feeding the baby and napping the baby and buffering and beating yourself up because you're not doing a good job. Or that's what's going on in your head, at least. You don't share your feelings with others. Right. You go inward. You're not messaging. You're not posting. And your result is, I don't move forward. I don't like myself as a business owner. But every time you hear this thought, I don't really have a business, you can literally go, shh, I love helping feel, feel, I love helping people feel better. So when you think about your business, you can choose to think, I don't really have a business, or you can choose to think, I love helping people feel better. Both are optional to you. Both are available. The choice is yours. But one thought creates a result of I don't move forward. I don't like myself as a business owner. And the other thought produces the result. I move forward. I trust me. I believe in me. And I haven't one time heard the words come out of your mouth. Right. I need to make money to be happy or to help people. Right. Yet in your 
unintentional model, the one that your lower brain's just running, you're giving all your power to it. You're like, yeah, I don't have a business because it doesn't make any money. Like in our church, we don't pay our pastors. They make no money. It's all volunteer lay service, right? But like your husband makes a salary for being a pastor. But like, is my pastor right. not a pastor because he doesn't get paid by our church because he volunteers? No. No, he's like still a pastor leading a congregation of hundreds, <laughs> taking care of them, just like your husband is. And so in one model, you're like attaching it to money and the other model, you're attaching it to what I think is your most true authentic self, which is like service to others, right? Right. The choice is yours. You get to pick what you believe about yourself and your business. The circumstance doesn't change. You have a business either way. It's just, do you want to look at it as I don't really have a business or do you want to look at it as I love helping people feel better? And I like really do like try to, because I tell people all the time, like I really do feel better when I take the products. Of course you do. It's just right. And you want to move forward. So your brain's like, yeah, let's just tell ourselves we don't right. really have a business because then we won't have to move forward. We just want to stay the same because that's what our brains like to do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You get to pick what you it's think. It's all about your thought. It's all about your thought. Right. Yep. And now you know what thought's going to come when you choose. I don't really have a plex. I don't really have a business. And what thought, you know what your result is going to be when you choose to, when you choose the thought, I love helping people feel better. Choice is yours. The result is a self-fulfilling prophecy of whatever you choose to think every time. And you can come Thank back you. and get, you can come back and get coached anytime on it as you <laughs> overcome the obstacles along the way in the pursuit of that. Remember, you're just growing the baby. You're just pregnant right now. Your business is pregnant. You're growing the baby business. Terrifying. <laughs> That's coming from a thought. Right. Every emotion comes from a single thought. You're like, oh my gosh, I'm feeling like overwhelmed, terrified, excited. I'm like, yep, there's three different thoughts. You have to like slow it down and figure out where they're coming from, right? That's what we do here. Right. Yeah. You're actually not, you're, yeah, you might be feeling three emotions at once, but it's not coming from one thought. It's coming from as many thoughts as you, as many feelings as you have. It's coming from all separate individual thoughts that are leading those emotions every time. Doesn't your brain hurt at the end of the day? <laughs> when you think oh my this? goodness. <laughs> no, I love it. This like freed my brain. Unsay. Yeah, because I'm like, but of course there. it's easy, I'm sure. I'm aware of it. Right. So I'm like, and it's like, I give myself space to just like allow it to do what it does and be like, Oh, yep. There I go. Being human again. Watch me go. There's like this level of self-love that I never had before for myself and for others. What's it look like with the incident yesterday like you still clearly deal with it daily you know like it's yeah. still you don't have it just all figured out immediately no because I'm just Cause always gonna human. have thoughts right yeah but this is why I pay for someone to coach me and why I am in coaching programs like my own <laughs> and why I <laughs> self-coach myself every day because then I can just be more in tune and I can decide and be aware of the results that are happening. And if I want to make changes, 
Okay. You're awesome. Thanks for getting coached today, Sarah and Kathy. And we'll see you back here tomorrow at 9 a.m., guys, Mountain Time. Bye.